what you have to realize, come playoff time, LeBron is going to be playing heavy minutes, and he's capable of carrying that type of load. So I'm not too worried about it right now. Maybe they'll get exposed, but think about the buyout market also. Mm -hmm. If that player is available, that means he probably can't really help you mm -hmm. in that department mm -hmm. because that somebody would have picked them up. If they, somebody there's a playmaker out there who can also score, maybe come off the bench and give you something. That player is not going to not going to be out there. Maybe in the in the buyout market. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know because. Well, you're there. Well, Darren yeah, Collins is a free agency. Say, yeah. yeah, I was going to say because played all year. Yeah, right. but you brought it up. Actually, we have Woj still here, so he can give us an update on the Lakers and maybe the moves they're continuing to think about making this season. Woj. Yeah, guys, Darren Collison's going to meet with his agent, Bill Duffy, early next week in L.A. and and, and very likely formalize, finalize uh, his decision about coming back. And if he gives his agent, Bill Duffy, the green light that he is ready to come back, uh, return to the league, of course, he retired uh, in, in, in really a surprising way to everybody in the league just prior to July, the start of July free agency. Uh, if he gives his agent the green light, then the next step for Bill Duffy, I'm told, is he'll set up formal meetings with the Lakers and the Clippers, and then we'll have uh, what what will be the next installment in this arms race uh, within L.A. Uh, for talent. They had competed for Marcus Morris at the trade deadline. Obviously, they competed uh, for Kawhi Leonard back in free agency. And, and the next chapter in that battle, uh, Darren Collison. <laughs> the battle continues, mm -hmm. as told by Woj. Uh, the question is then, Jay Will, is he the answer? Is he the help that the Lakers need? I, I think he gives him another ball handler. Uh, understanding that he shot over 40% over the last four seasons from the three-point line is critical for them. I don't think he's the answer, though. He's not enough to get them over the hump. I have the Clippers coming out of the West. Them getting Mar yeah. Marcus Morris mm -hmm. was a huge addition for them. I thought if the Lakers were able to get a guy like Andre Iguodala, then if they were to meet with Finals, that allows LeBron James to rest a little bit because he can take possessions against a Kawhi Leonard or against a PG instead of LeBron having to do what Jimmy Butler has to do, Paul. You know what I mean? <laughs> Playing on both ends of the floor all the time at 34, 35 years old. I'm not sure if they're relying on. Look at the two names you said. You yeah. said Andre Iguodala and Darren Collison. Neither one of them has played ball I in over nine months. Now, if we're reliant on a guy to come in who said, I have no desire to play this year. And then all of a sudden, it's like that guy at the park. You're like, I don't feel like playing. We need an extra guy. He's like, oh, yeah, okay, I'll play. How much can he really help me? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm with you really You're not counting me? on it. <laughs> I'm not counting on it. He's just an extra body. So, I mean. That's fine. Yeah, there's no other answers to the Lakers' problem. This just came down to the Lakers. As much as people said, hey, go get Derrick Rose, they didn't have draft picks to put together for a deal for Derrick Rose. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Kuzma's contract was only $2 million. So even if you had some other pieces, if you're another team, you want more than just Kuzma. You want draft picks. You want something that set sure. you up for the future. They couldn't offer that. Well, listen, the Lakers weren't able to make the move maybe that they could have wanted before the trade deadline. But one big drum or bomb that was dropped was by Woj, and it was right before the trade deadline. You were in the studio for this one, actually, yeah. Paul Pierce. Uh, it was D'Angelo Russell leaving Golden State, going to Minnesota in a deal that sends the former number one overall pick Andrew Wiggins to the Warriors. The Warriors will also get the 2021 protected first round draft pick and a 2021 second round pick and sends Jacob Evans and Amari Spellman to the T-Wolves. All right, guys. Mm. Mm -hmm. I, I want you to go at it because they look like they're mirror images of each other. Look at those numbers. They look so similar, but they're different players on the court. Yeah. Can you can you tell me who you would pick? Who would you want on your I team? Mean, right now, D'Angelo Russell. I think mm -hmm. you get more value for that money. I mean, it's obvious that the Minnesota Timberwolves core was not working out. I mean, before the last two seasons, they went from a playoff team that flamed out to not making the playoffs. I mean, they had the talent, and so they got to go in a different direction. Of course, you want to keep Cat, your, your franchise player, but you need new energy. And I believe that, you know, D'Angelo Russell will help them, and he also will help them bring in other free agents, a la maybe his other boy over there, Booker, Phoenix in a couple oh, years. Mm, I like maybe that. in a couple years, because they've talked about it. But this is a win for the Minnesota Timberwolves for the simple fact I don't know what role that Wiggins is going to play for the Warriors. He's been a 1A, 1B star for Minnesota oh. that hasn't worked out. And so now you're asking him to be like third, fourth option. He's going to have to play like a Harrison Barnes type role there. Will he be able to do it? I don't know. Paul, he's a souped up Harrison Barnes. <laughs> He's a souped-up Harrison Barnes. And here's, here's what I'm saying, though. I think the Warriors won this whole deal. D'Angelo Russell dominates the ball. I don't think that fits into the style of offense that the Golden State Warriors play when you get Stephen Clay back. What I do like about Harrison Barnes, everybody's always wanted him to be 1A. He is not an alpha dog. Mm -hmm. But if you put him in he the right... He got paid like He it. got paid, but that's not his fault. 
That's management fault. <laughs> Wiggins, excuse you me. Said, I was gonna say Wiggins, you said Wiggins okay, Wiggins. He's not an alpha dog. But if you put him in the right culture, though, where now he is the third, the fourth option, I think that allows him to flourish because he could be a three and D type of player. Get him where you fit in, and Steph and Clay create the environment where it's conducive to him learning how to win. He's never learned how to win being on a good team. No, listen, he's already an inefficient shooter. So now he's going to get less shots. And then you're going to ask him to play, do something he's never done, be a spot-up player, mm. and then be a, a major defender. I mean, you don't just change your roles in, in the prime of your career. He's wait, still young. You weren't happy with the way I mean, he was playing in Minnesota. Like he's not a 32-year-old and like, all right, I have to I have to turn into this. Like, he's in no, the prime, he, but he he's might have to make prime. He's like, his mental is like, I'm still the guy. Now you're telling me to go stand in the corner. Now you're telling me to no, go guard. No, now we're Memphis. teaching you the right way to win. Now we're teaching the right way to play efficient that, that basketball. Take, take There's a difference. I understand he's 24 that's years old, though, Paul. To make. That's tough for a guy. We still got the guy, too. Woj, there's something you want to add on this T-Wolves <laughs> trade? Oh, no. When, <laughs> when Warriors GM Bob Myers was, was contemplating this trade, he talked to Tom Thibodeau, uh, Wiggins' former coach in Minnesota, and he made the point to Bob Myers that, you know, when Jimmy Butler came in, Andrew Wiggins went from a, you know, a 24 a point a game score to to under 20 and welcomed uh, a lesser role sacrifice was willing uh, to give up some things offensively to play on a better team and and I think Bob Myers and Steve Kerr what they're banking on was listen when you're the number one pick and you're drafted uh, into an organization that way you're expected to be the savior well he wasn't he can't carry a franchise. He's already sacrificed and taken a step back once in his career in Minnesota, and he'll be asked to do that again. But I think they believe that he will welcome that because, uh, he, listen, there's a, a way for him to fit in in Golden State and maybe be more the kind of a uh, complimentary player that, that he was really, he probably should have been in, intended to be from the very beginning. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For highlights and analysis, check out the ESPN app. And for live streaming and premium content, check out ESPN+.